الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم وعيد المغضوب عليهم لا نعم الله الكبير Okay, well, again, grateful to God for giving us this opportunity, and it's a huge blessing and an honor that we are experiencing today, and uh, so we can uh, extol God and and uh, thank Him for all of the uh, favors and all the uh, uh, blessings that He's bestowed upon us today. It's uh, it's a huge uh, uh, opportunity for us that we have to embrace, uh, embrace and. Uh, <clears throat> remember that all of these are only um, uh, doable and is only achievable by God's mercy and his infinite grace upon us. Um, again, gratefulness and appreciativeness is a godlike quality and we have to follow his path and uh, and try to, uh, to steadfastly um, uh, adhere to his uh, instruction, his commandments, and that's the only way that we can uh, survive and we can... Um, develop our souls and uh, get closer to God. And that's, uh, that's something that we have to all to have, all of us have to remember that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, today what I wanted to, to discuss with you, I want to I go back to what I discussed last time. And, uh, and I want to go to these, uh, these six galaxies that were uh, made a lot of uh, news a uh, couple of weeks ago. And so, so these... Uh, these six galaxies, as I said, it's, uh, it's amazing because what it does actually, it's, uh, let me just, this is space.com. I have this picture. It's a giant mature galaxy seem, seem to have filled the universe shortly after the Big Bang, and astronomers are puzzled. So this actually, what it does, it, it turns this so-called Big Bang cosmology and you know that we learn about it, and, and I teach it, and, and you know, uh, it basically turns it on its head. And, and so here we go, and he says, nobody expected them. Okay, so the caption under says, these six galaxies may force astronomers to rewrite cosmology books. Okay, so remember I said that those books, like, you know, I, I taught particle physics, ING physics and cosmology, um, and the books that I use is absolutely obsolete. Absolutely obsolete. Okay. So that's why we have to go back to the origin of all of this information that God is providing for us. And that, that comes from the scripture itself. It comes from the Quran. And so the cosmology that God teaches in the Quran is the correct cosmology. This is not the correct cosmology. Because, see, every time we turn on a telescope, new stuff comes out that we did not expect. One of these galaxies, I don't know which one, is 10 times the size of our galaxy. The Andromeda galaxy is actually eight times our galaxy. Our sister galaxy is Andromeda. It's about eight times our galaxy, the size of our galaxy. Okay? As we know it today. We really do not know the size of our galaxy. Okay. There, are, there are observations and theories that hints to the, to the fact that it may just be as large as the Andromeda galaxy. Milky Way may be just as large as the Andromeda galaxy. Okay. The reason is because we are inside the galaxy and we're looking out. We're not looking at our galaxy from outside the galaxy, which is impossible. We can't do that. So, <clears throat> it says, galaxies nearly as massive as the Milky Way and full of mature red stars seem to be dispersed in deep field image obtained by James Webb Space Telescope. Okay. During its early observation campaign, and they are giving astronomers a headache. We cannot explain this. This actually, all of these cosmological theories that we have, 
they seem to be wrong. We don't understand them. Okay, so I have another thing that I want to show you. Okay. Um, I want to show you this. That this is another uh, another website that I went to. Okay. So what I did was I said, okay, uh, how many galaxies do we have in the universe? Okay. So this is this is a uh, sky at night uh, site. Okay. So you can uh, look at it if you want to. But anyway, it says right in the highlighted section. See, uh, this technique, however, will however give you a lower limit to the number of galaxies. One such estimate says that there are between 100 and 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. That's as far as we can see. It says other astronomers have tried to estimate the number of missed galaxies in previous studies and come up with a total number of 2 trillion galaxies in the universe. Okay? A trillion is 1,000 billion. Okay, so you can you can imagine the, the numbers, okay? So now this is this is old news already. This does not include these galaxies that Webb just took a picture of. It doesn't include that. So what I did I did a sort of a back of the envelope calculation, some estimates, and if you look at that part of the sky, that's a very small part of the sky, probably one arc second by one arc second. So I tried to, to do some calculation, and I came up with 250 billion galaxies from that layer. Okay. So that's why I went back to the Quran, and I looked at the Quran to see what God is actually saying. He says, we, we understood this and translated it as, my land is spacious, so go ahead and worship me alone. Okay. Now that verse was understood by us the wrong way. Okay? Remember I said when, 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 the, when the verse comes in there, in, in any scripture, okay, that has multi-dimensional meanings. Okay? One of the meanings obviously says that I'm not going to accept the excuse that you were, you were oppressed by your, by your leaders who were tyrants and you could not worship me alone. That's not an excuse. Okay? But God is also saying that not that only my land is spacious, but it is ever expanding. What's that? Okay? In Arabic, the word wasir means expander. That's one of God's names. Okay? That means the amount of matter in the universe just keeps growing. And so he said, and worship me alone. Obviously, when this happens, when we see this with our own eyes, this actually adds to the glorification of God. And that's what we have to remember. Then we have no other option but to worship him alone, no matter where we are. No matter who our leaders are, tyrants or whatever they are, doesn't matter. Okay. They cannot conquer your brain. They don't know what's inside your mind. As I said, the believing Egyptian was light years away from Pharaoh. Could not touch him. But his mind. His mind was the right was the right mind. Is a believer's mind. And nobody could see it, nobody could touch him except God. So that's what we have to remember. So all of those verses that as we read it, we have to understand them. Okay? We, cannot, we cannot understand and translate things because they are in a dictionary or this and that, the others, or this is archaic or this is modern or something. We have to find that out for ourselves. Okay? The word file in Arabic means doer. Is an active noun. Maf'ul is a passive noun. Okay. 
means somebody who something has been done to him. Zalim is somebody who is actually enforcing law or injustice upon somebody else. It has been mentioned in the Quran so many times. The unjust. Those are active people who do that. Okay. So we have to learn this. We cannot, we cannot say, well, you know, this and that and the others. It doesn't matter what other people do or what other people think or what, what other people actually speak the way they speak or whatever. It wouldn't make any difference. We have to find out for ourselves. God says in, in chapter 17, he says, do not accept any information except that you verify it for yourself. I've given you the mind, the, the, uh, the hearing, the eyesight, and the mind, and you are responsible for using them. We are all responsible, and God has given us the tools. We cannot act in an ignorant way. So we have to be very careful. And as I said, all of these are lessons to us. And I said that we have to go to the bottom of these verses and see what God is actually describing to us. Okay. When he says he's ever expanding, okay, so it's, it's amazing because now what we do in here, okay, we are looking at these. It's ever expanding. They were not there. Three weeks ago, Woody had no idea about this three weeks ago. They turned on this thing, this, this uh, telescope, and this telescope, what it does actually, it pierced down into the basically the thing it was the beginning, very close to so-called Big Bang. Yeah? They were absolutely wrong because they thought they were going to see faint stars and things like that. They would just start igniting. No, it's a lot bigger than this. Okay? There are estimates that the, the size of the universe that we are living in is 92 billion light years. Okay? Can you imagine that? And it, it actually gives you what the volume is and what the surface area is and everything. It gives it to you then. Okay? But minding you, let me, let me just tell you this, okay? When, when God talks about this universe and stuff like that, okay, this is, this is, uh, this is not a sphere. Okay? It's not a sphere that, like a basketball or something like that. It has actually, it looks like the surface of the sphere with two extra dimensions. Okay? Remember, just, just imagine a basketball. Basketball, what you do is you're living on the surface, you exist on the surface of the sphere, not inside, not outside, on the surface, but the surface actually has two extra dimensions, okay, which is, we call it space-time. Okay, so be very careful about that, okay? So then that hypersphere, let me call it that, hypersphere, that hypersphere has a volume, and they're all calculated, and you can find it on, on the web, and you can enjoy it, but the point is that, okay, I don't want this to become some kind of, you know, science project or something. No, okay? Just look at these pictures and say, oh, my God. And that's what actually adds to the greatness of God. And that's what God actually wants from us, to see his greatness, to understand it. To glorify him, to extol him, and that's the mechanism of contact praise. And we have derived contact praise with this mathematical equation, the mathematical information that God gives us from the primes and their indices, over and over and over again. And people still resisting to do their contact praise. And so, so, remember this, okay? And now, all of these things are going to be even studied more. Okay? It's not easy to make a star. A star takes billions of years to be made. 
uh, molecular crowds and they have to they have to somehow bind together through gravity that takes billions of years to do that then they have to gravity has to be so high that actually it fuses hydrogen it makes helium and that then it becomes a star then it actually ignites in a sort of a thermonuclear reaction due to gravity So then you start making other elements. It makes helium, it makes brilliant, it makes carbon. And that carbon is, is an absolute miracle by itself how it's made, actually. It makes a brilliant, and then another carbon wants to attach to it. I'm sorry, another, another helium wants to attach to it to make carbon. But you know what? The lifetime of that brilliant eight is... 10 to the minus 16 seconds. Okay. That's mean 1 over 1 with 16 zeros. That's how short that lifetime is. But God has actually put the so-called resonance in there. That when that other uh, helium comes in there, that helium wants to attach to it, but when he sees that resonance, it immediately falls in that resonance and latches on to the brilliant before it has a chance to decay and makes a, makes a carbon-12. And that's what, you know, we are made of. We are made of carbon-12. If that resonance did not exist, you and I would not be talking about this. And that's actually made in the belly of the stars. Okay? That's how God does things. This is the greatness of God, and as I said, that's why he says, do this, and then what happens, you emigrate, or you go someplace else, and you see these things, and, and the, as time goes on, again, as I said, today we are privileged to see this that did not know three weeks ago. Astronomers were not scratching their heads. So okay, how can you rewrite textbooks? Because those textbooks, I just looked at, I just looked at textbooks that were published 2023. And they have wrong information in them. According to new findings, they have wrong information. Okay? So again, what do we, do? we go back to the scripture. Go to chapter 41 and read chapter 41. And that somehow doesn't jive with the quantum mechanical stuff that people have learned. I'm sorry. That's too bad. Okay? That's the correct information. He's giving you the correct information. We are after the wrong information. We are after the fleeting information that doesn't exist two weeks from now. That's exactly what happened in the case of this these six galaxies that were observed. Okay? So as you see here, this is about one second, one arc second. If you do the calculation right, now, this is just an underestimate of that, 250 billion is under because you don't know what's behind these things and how deep it's going. You have no idea. But again, the expanding land or matter, as God talks about it in the Quran, okay? It's a genesis to worship God alone. It acts as a, as a catalyst to worship God alone. So the more we see these things, the more we are at awe at his greatness. This is the beauty of this universe. And that's, that's why, you know, I mean, I've been thrilled with all of these findings. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And again, those people who were before us, they were, not, they were not privy to these kind of information that we are having today. And that's what I said. I said, look, this is a brand new universe that you wake up this morning. It's not the same as yesterday. It's much bigger. There's more matter. Okay? Obviously, there's more matter. Okay? And so they're going to recalculate now the number of galaxies, two trillion. And so we, we are, as I said, in this unique position to, to gain, to be grateful to God. 
and extol him and praise him and glorify him for giving us this information that other people didn't have. But other people, they still want to go back. They still do not believe these things. They want to go back. They think more information was the best. No, it wasn't. The information is today for us. And we have to be absolutely grateful and humble for having this unique opportunity to witness all of these things. I'm going to stop here and we'll 